Let's consider a few common cases of financial fraud, how they work, and what they look like in action. Let's start with Margaret. She is 70 years old and uses email regularly to keep in touch with her sister and her daughter's family. One day, an urgent email came in from her bank asking her to update her account information and passwords. If she failed to do so, the email explained, they would close her account. The email looked legitimate. It had her bank's logo on it, and the site it told her to visit also looked credible. So, she entered her bank account information and her password and thought she was done. Until she checked her bank statement the next day and saw money had been withdrawn from her checking account. Next, let's consider Theo's experience. Theo, who is 76, has lived alone since his wife passed away five years ago. When he got a call from his grandson, Craig, he was excited to hear from him, but became alarmed when he found out that Craig was in Thailand and his passport and wallet had been stolen. Craig asked that Theo not tell his parents because he didn't want to get in trouble. Theo, concerned for his grandson, wired $3,000 to help Craig get his ID replaced and buy a plane ticket home. By the time he realized Craig had never been to Thailand and that the person he had wired money to was a criminal, it was too late. Now let's talk about Gus. Gus and his wife Tina are both 65. They retired last year and have been shopping for a trailer to take on their dream trip across Canada. They found a great deal on Craigslist, a guy in Ohio looking to sell his trailer at a super low price. All they had to do was transfer half the cost up front and he'd drive it up for them on the weekend. Eager to get a good deal, they sent him $2,000 right away and never heard from the guy again.